Welcome again to the lectures on language theory. These lectures are delivered specially for students whose major is Foreign Language to Foreign Languages, starting at the Department of English and German Languages. This is lecture number nine within the course of language theory. The theme of this lecture is the pronoun, the adjective, the stative. The outline of the lecture includes the following points. First of all, we'll, we'll speak about the pronoun. Further on, we'll discuss the characteristic features of the adjectives as a part of speech. Then we'll consider in brief substantivization of adjectives, and then we'll talk about the statives. The pronoun is a part of speech which points out objects and their qualities without naming them. Therefore, the pronoun possesses a highly generalized meaning that seldom materializes outside of the context. The semantic classification of pronouns includes such subclasses as personal, possessive, demonstrative, interrogative, reciprocal, relative, indefinite, negative, conjunctive, defining and reflexive pronouns. The deictic or indicatory function of the pronoun is inherent in many subclasses except maybe interrogative, indefinite and negative. The anaphoric function or the function of connecting with a preceding sentence or clause is characteristic of relative and conjunctive pronouns, though it may be occasionally performed by the other subclasses. Syntactic peculiarities of pronouns are accounted for by the fact that the pronoun is very close in its syntactic functions to those of the noun and the adjective. Hence, the main functions it performs are the ones of the subject, the predicate, the object, and the attribute. The pronoun seems to have the grammatical categories of person and gender in personal and possessive pronouns, for example, I, the first person, you, the second person, he, the third person, he, she, this is uh, his, your. These examples show the category of gender, masculine and feminine. The category of case in the personal pronouns and the relative and interrogative who, the nominative and objective cases, for example, who or whom. Indefinite and reciprocal and negative, the common and genitive cases, for example, nobody, nobodies, someone, someones. And the category of number, with the demonstrative pronouns and the defining pronoun other. This singular, these plural, that singular, those plural, or other singular, others plural. Now let's talk about the characteristic features of the adjectives as a part of speech. They are as follows. The lexical grammatical meaning of attributes, they express property of things or persons. From the morphological viewpoint, they have the category of degrees of comparison. From the point of view of their combinability, they combine with nouns, as it has already been stated above, they express the properties of things. It seems to be important to differentiate the combinability of a word with other words and reference of a word of a part of speech to another part of speech. We put this because adjectives modify nouns, but they can combine with adverbs, link verbs, and the word one. For example, a white horse, the horse is white, a white one, the sound rose red, the sound rose extremely red. Another characteristic feature of the adjective is the stem building affixes, which are Full, less, ish, as, if, er, on, pre, in. 
For instance, useless, childish, courageous, impulsive, unconscious, prehistoric. The syntactic functions are attribute and predicative. It is important to point out that in the function of an attribute, the adjectives are in most cases used in preposition. In postposition, they are very seldom. Now we'll speak about the grammatical category of degrees of comparison. The category of comparison of adjectives shows the absolute or relative quality of a substance. Not all the adjectives of the English language have the degrees of comparison. From this point of view, they fall under two types, comparable adjectives and non-comparable adjectives. The non-comparable adjectives are relative ones like golden, wooden, silk, cotton, roar, and so on. The comparable ones are qualitative adjectives. The grammatical category of degrees of comparison is the position of three individual meanings. The first, positive degree, the second, comparative degree, and the third, superlative degree. The common or basic degree is called positive, which is expressed by the absence of a marker. Therefore, we see that it is expressed by a zero morpheme. So far as to the comparative or superlative degrees, they have special material means. At the same time, we'll have to admit that not all the qualitative adjectives form their degrees in the similar way. From the point of view of forming of the comparative and superlative degrees of comparison, the qualitative adjectives must be divided into four groups. They are as follows. The first group, one and some two syllabic adjectives that form their degrees by the help of inflections er and est respectively. For instance, short, shorter, the shortest, strong, stronger, the strongest, pretty, prettier, the prettiest. The second group contains the adjectives which form their degrees by means of root vowel and final consonant change. Many more the most, much more the most, little less the least, far, further, the furthest. The third group is the adjectives that form their degrees by means of suppletion. For example, good, better, the best, bad, worse, the worst. It should be noted that the two adjectives form their degrees by means of suppletion, that is, the occurrence of an unrelated form to fill a gap in a conjugation. It concerns only of the comparative degree, good, better, bad, worse. The suppletive degrees of these adjectives are formed by a root vowel and final consonant change, better, the best, and by adding t to the form of the comparative degree, in worse, the worst. And the fourth group is many syllabic adjectives which form their degrees by means of the words more and most. Interesting, more interesting, the most interesting. Beautiful, more beautiful, the most beautiful. We have not been referring to the works of grammarians on the problem, since the opinions of most of the, all of the grammarians coincide on the questions treated. But so far as to the lexical way of expressing the degrees is concerned, we find considerable divergence in its treatment. Some authors treat more beautiful the most beautiful not as a lexical way of formation of the degrees of comparison, but as analytical forms. Their arguments are as follows. More and ER identical as to the meaning of higher degree. 
The distribution is complementary. Together, they cover all the adjectives having the degree of comparison. Within the system of the English grammar, they do not find a category which can be formed at the same time by synthetic and analytical means. And if it is a grammatical category, it cannot be formed by several means. Therefore, they consider it to be a free syntactic unit, which consists of an adverb and a noun. Different treatment is found with regard to the definite and indefinite articles before most. The most interesting book and a most interesting book. Haimovich and Dragovskaya say that one must not forget that more and most are not only word morphemes of comparison. They can also be notional words. Moreover, they are polysemantic and polyfunctional words. One of the meanings of most is very exceedingly. It is in this meaning that the word most is used in the expression a most interesting book. As has been stated, we do not think that there are two homonymous words, most functional word and most notional word. There is only one word, notional adverb, which can serve to express the superlative degree by lexical means and since it's a free combination of three notional words, any article can be used according to the meaning that is going to be expressed. The difference in the meaning of the examples above is due to the difference in the means of the definite and indefinite articles. Next point of the lecture is substantivization of adjectives. As it is known, adjectives under certain circumstances can be substantivized, that is, become nouns. Haimovich states that when adjectives are converted into nouns, they no longer indicate attributes of substances, but substances possessing those attributes. He speaks of two types of substantivization, full and partial. By full substantivization, he means when an adjective gets all the morphological features of nouns, like native, a native, the native, natives. By the partial substantivization, he means when adjectives get only some of the morphological features of nouns, as, for instance, the adjective rich. Have, having substantivized can be used only with the definite article, the rich. Ilyich is almost of the same opinion. He says, We shall confine ourselves to the statement that these words are partly substantivized and occupy an intermediate position. More detailed consideration of the problem shows that the rich and others are not partial substantivization. All the substantivized adjectives can be explained within the terms of nouns. And now we'll speak about the statives. Among the words signifying properties of a nominal referent, there is a lexemic set which claims to be recognized as a separate part of speech, that is, as a class of words different from the adjectives in its class-forming features. These are words built up by the prefix a and denoting different states, mostly of temporary duration. Here belong lexemes like afraid, agog, adrift, ablaze. In traditional grammar, these words were generally considered under the heading of predicative adjectives, some of them also under the heading of adverbs, since their most typical position in the sentence is that of a predicative, and they are but occasionally used as prepositional attributes to nouns. 
Notional words signifying states and specifically used as predicatives were first identified as a separate part of speech in the Russian language by Sherba and Vinogradov. The two scholars called the newly identified part of speech the category of state, and correspondingly, separate words making up this category, words of the category of state. On the analogy of the Russian category of state, the English qualifying a word of the corresponding meanings was subjected to a lexicogrammatical analysis and given the part of speech heading category of state. This analysis were first, was first conducted by Elish and later continued by other linguists. The term words of the category of state being rather cumbersome from the technical point of view was later changed into stative words or statives. The part of speech interpretation of the statives is not shared by all linguists working in the domain of English and has found both it, its proponents and opponents. Probably the most consistent and explicit exposition of the part of speech interpretation of statives has been given by Haimovich and Rogovskaya. First, the statives called by the quoted offers, add links, by virtue of their connection with link verbs and on the analogy of the term adverbs, are allegedly opposed to adjectives on a purely semantic basis, since adjectives denote qualities and statives add links denote states. Second, as different from adjectives, Statives add links are characterized by the specific prefix a. Third, they allegedly do not possess the category of the degrees of comparison. And fourth, the combinability of statives add links is different from that of adjectives insofar as they are not used in, in the prepositional attributive function, that is, are characterized by the absence of the right-hand combinability with nouns. The reconsideration of the stative on the basis of comparison with the classical adjectives inevitably discloses the fundamental relationship between the two. Identity on the part of speech level, though naturally providing for the distinct differentiation on the subclass level. The adjective as a whole signifies property, which is categorically divided into subst substantive quality and substantive relation. In this respect, statives do not fundamentally differ from classical adjectives. Moreover, common adjectives can express the same properties. The main meaning types conveyed by statives are psychic state of a person, afraid, ashamed, aware, the physical state of a person, a stir, a foot. The physical state of an object, a fire, a blaze, a glow. The state of an object in space, a skew, a wry, a slant. Meanings of the same order are rendered by the prepositional adjectives. For example, the burning house, the house of fire. Similar cases, cases alike. Statives are not used in attributive preposition, but, like adjectives, they are distinguished by the left-hand categorical combinability both with nouns and link verbs. The household was all astir. The household was all excited. Basic functions of the stative are not the predicative and the attribute are the predicative and the attribute. The similarity of functions leads to the possibility of the use of a stative and a common adjective in a homogeneous group. For instance, launches and barges moored to the dock were ablaze and loud with wild sound. And the last argument. Statives do not take the synthetical form of the degrees of comparison but they are capable of expressing comparison analytically. For example, of us, of us all, 
Jack was the one most aware of the delicate situation in which we found ourselves. That's all in brief concerning the contents of this lecture. And as a rule, you are offered a set of comprehension questions to check your understanding uh, of the lecture. And you are provided with a list of sources for further reading. Thank you for attention.